Hello, lovely people. Welcome to Conscious Conversion. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being in this world. I'm sending you so much love here from Maui. And um, if, in case you haven't ever listened to the show, Conscious Conversion is a weekly, sometimes at this point monthly, because I have been MIA for a hot minute gallivanting. But it's intended to be a weekly podcast about how we bridge the gap between business and spirit, money and meaning, technology and regeneration in a wildly transforming world. In a time of a ridiculous amount of polarity and uncertainty, this podcast explores how together we are connecting across the planet. We are connecting across our differences, and we certainly are connecting across dimensions as we build the new earth and the new paradigm together. I am your loving host, Sari Amtich. And today I am absolutely delighted to introduce to you somebody who I am super aligned with um, in all the ways, spiritually um, and probably emotionally and certainly entrepreneurially, (laughs) Mari Grace Theory. She is the oracular CEO of Goddess Support. She's a priestess and loves serving the goddess in all her forms and incarnations. Seeing a huge need for intentional implementation alongside business coaching, she stepped up and now offers a turnkey team of goddesses to women in online business. You have important medicine to offer the world. Don't let the technical side of the online business realm stop you. Get goddess support. We got you. She's got you. The goddesses have got you. (laughs) Anyway, um, I'm so happy to have you here, Mati Grace. And I I would like to welcome you to um, add anything or expand upon that more official bio I just read about you. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. What a lovely intro. I feel like warm and fuzzy (laughs) the uh alignment feeling is mutual so thank you um happy to be here and yeah uh i'll just say a little bit more about what i do i'm i'm a ceo but i'm really kind of like a fractional coo i help other women you know run their businesses um and of course you know as someone who in my position i receive a lot of inquiries and questions about that. So I do also have like a course for beginners, people who are just starting in their online business who want to have all those answers. So I, like I I love to serve the goddess. I love to worship the goddess and serve the feminine and everyone. Uh, But first and foremost, I'm, I'm an artist. Like I went to art school. I studied art. I believe that everything that you do in life is art. Therefore, you know, creativity, customization, modding, everything is kind of like this non-negotiable ingredient in every single act. That's how I operate. Like whether I'm actually making art, like a painting or whether I'm doing graphic design or building someone a website or a sales page or even an email funnel, um, cooking dinner, getting dressed, like capital P presence is an art. And so that to me, that's, that's really what I an, intend to embody is just life is art. <laughs> mm. Well, you know, I love that because um, I'm, I am um, sort of diving into a deeper realm of ceremony with a particular plant medicine, as my listeners know, with the Wachuma, mm-hmm. um, which is a cactus um, from the Andes Mountains. And the more I dive into that, the more I feel like everything is ceremony, todo es ceremonia. And so um, when I hear you saying like every life is art, it's the same thing. It's like everything is sacred, Mm -hmm. todo es ceremonia, like everything, picking up my water bottle and drinking from it. Now I'm not saying I have mastered the art of doing this, but if I pick up my water bottle with total presence and, um, and care and love and like drink that water, with so much like reverence and gratitude, life just gets really, really fun, sensual and fun and delightful. And so what I'm hearing from you um, is that, that that is what you um, intend to embody. And that's freaking beautiful. Yeah, you know, presence, ceremony, whatever you wanna call it, it's how we dilate time and how we juice 
more Mm -hmm. out of life and what else are we here for you got that right it's certainly not working nine to fives um that we hate sitting in a concrete box and staring at a box of light um and killing time as much as possible until we can get home and drink a bottle of wine which is what i used to do um Um, I want to just like, cause I, I love asking this question and I love sometimes people refuse to answer it in a, in the most beautiful way. Sometimes people, um, answer it with this sort of really like almost perfect canned response because they've thought about it so much. And sometimes people just eloquently, spontaneously, um, come up with the most amazing, deep, profound wisdom from this question. So all, all is welcome here. Pressure's on. Wow. (laughs) You can totally just be like, no, fuck that question. Um, and that's fine. So I have, I've had people do that. So right now in this incarnation, in this moment and space and time, um, just like now, it doesn't have to be yesterday or tomorrow, like really right now, what is um, your soul's purpose? Hmm. To amplify the feminine. Hmm. And, you know, in this season of my life, that comes in the form of supporting women in their businesses. But, you know, just 10 years ago, I was teaching yoga and breath work and meditation. And then I got into coaching women, empowering them to love themselves. And, you know, it's always shifting, but it's always been about amplifying the feminine. Um, Because it's, it's really important to recognize that we as women, we need different support than men or at least you know our feminine side whether you're a man or whatever you identify as like our feminine side needs different ingredients to help us like really move forward into a higher octave of our being you know we don't always just need the you know the other person's treasure map to their treasure that's what i see a lot of things happening especially in the online business world we see a lot of people selling their their treasure map that they that worked for them and it goes to their treasure. And so then you're buying this map and you're doing all the one, two, three step plans, da, 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 da. When really what the feminine needs is we need somebody who can hold space for us, somebody who can listen, who can ask the right questions that are gonna really pull, pull what we need out of us and most importantly, defy logic. So I was kind of like a, long-winded answer but really it's just to me it's like we going back to life being art like we need to create our life into a masterpiece like we are all artists like I am the paintbrush life is the canvas we as women we have the ability to inject magic into the mundane our feminine energy is the magic and embracing that is the key to our bliss and to me, women in bliss is crucial for humanity because women set the tone. We set the tone in our families, in our communities, in the world. And we've all seen this. You go to someone's house with like their family gathering. If the mom is pissed, it's not a good day. <laughs> like if mom is happy or the matriarch is just like singing, like everyone's having a good time. The women set the tone. So if we, if we as women make love our sacred chant, it sends this powerful vibration that ripples out into the entire world. And so for that reason, my focus is on women. My focus is on the feminine because we set the tone. And really what's happened to us is that for the longest time, we've been masking ourselves in masculine logic and reason, and it's holding us back. It's frustrating us. It's the reason that we're, you know, maybe not having a good time sometimes. And we've put our lives on on an autopilot of sorts and following this linear path that's been laid out for us already. And that's simply not how we as women are supposed to contribute to the collective of humanity. Like we are the ones that do crazy shit. We defy logic. We quantum leap. We create miracles. And so we need, that's where I want the women to be. That's what I am hoping to support in every facet of my being in every way possible. That is my mission to embody goddess support, to support goddesses that 
like we're walking on the planet right now when you learn about a goddess that's you know walked on walked on earth at one point in our in time you could be reading about yourself and so that's that's really like my devotion and my focus is there's the goddess in every one of us it's just as valid and worthy of worship as the goddesses that we read about in our beautiful books wow Thank you so much for that. Thank, one, thank you for expressing all of that. And two, thank you for doing that. Thank you for your soul's purpose. It's interesting to me um, to think about like what, like, it really is true that the, that the women and the feminine sets the tone. And mm -hmm. I, it's on the, the, the micro and, you know, you can extrapolate that to the macro as well. But on the micro, they, you've got that, that um, saying that I have said a few times in my own world, like happy wife, happy life. <laughs> and not that I intend to be married ever again, but it's so true in a household. If you've got a happy matriarch in the house, it's going to have amazing ripple effects. If, if, if the woman in the house is playing music and dancing and preparing food in the kitchen with a smile on her face and whistling and singing songs and, and like doing like her thing, like everybody is delighted whereas if if she is oppressed repressed um resentful you know um just taken for granted nobody in that household is going to be happy so i mean if you take that to the macro and just think about sort of the oppression and repression that has happened in this toxic patriarchy that we've been under for thousands of years and imagine what could happen and what is happening i like to believe the hopeful optimistic um, part of me believes is happening is a, a rise of the feminine and a rise of the divine feminine um, i'm curious like what is what does that look like to you do you feel that too i assume you do a rise <laughs> of the divine feminine and um how do you see that playing out right now hmm. I, I see it in so many ways, but I have to just say that the main way that I'm seeing it is that women are claiming their ability to create wealth and financial abundance, and they're doing it. And it's so epic to watch. Uh, and it's something that, you know, I've, I've done as well, and I never, ever thought it would happen. And it really took, you know, seeing women go before me and what they've created and the, uh, you know, the abundance that that is out there for all of us and just seeing how possible it is um that to me is like it might sound really 3d to say like oh money but you know when you are i believe that money in the hands of you know spiritual good people makes the world a better place so of course i'm going to celebrate that and i'm going to celebrate you know women having you know for a lot of us since we have been living kind of in this not kind of, but totally in like a toxic patriarchy. Women, for women, money means more freedom, more opportunity. Like if back before bank accounts existed, the whole reason that women were requesting jewelry from men is because that was how they could hold on to wealth. They weren't allowed to have a bank account. So they're like, give me some beautiful rocks so that I can actually have some money so I can make moves for myself. And so that to me is one of the the big uh signatures that i'm seeing is just women getting out there unapologetically making bank and then empowering other women to do it too i think that that's super powerful absolutely um and i love that you're like that you um have built a business providing sort of like what you say, got to support. So you're providing support to women business owners so that they can be more embodied in their sort of feminine nature. And you're providing um, sort of jobs, so to speak, um, for the team that's, you know, that works with with you. Um, so you're, you're sort of, it's this multi-tiered, multi-layered empowerment of, of women. Um, and sort of taking off the plate of some women, like some of that more technical stuff that they aren't really interested in doing. Mm -hmm. um, and did I lose you for a second? You're frozen. You're frozen.
There you are. Here I am. So um, living, you know, in the jungle, as always, internet blips. I think that happens everywhere in the world. I use the jungle as an excuse, but um, <laughs> where did I cut off? Um, I think we were just talking about just how like it's a multi-layered yeah, uh, what you're offering business. Yeah. Yeah. What you're offering is, is a lot of empowerment. I mean, on all levels, right. So the people that work within, um, got a support and to the, to the women who you serve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone, all the goddesses who work for me are entrepreneurs. They are all self-led. I don't hire anybody that needs to be micromanaged. Um, they have to lead themselves because that's what it means to be a goddess. So yes, there is a lot of me kind of being in the, you know, the boss goddess and the mentorship role of really inviting them to consistently rise into that, you know, goddess, what I call goddess status, um, which is the name of my course, because that is, that to me is like, that's what, that's, that's the level that I wanted to be at before I, before, whenever I, before I had a name for it, when I saw other women out there leading themselves or, or having their own businesses and, and leading with the feminine, not, not, not a, fe not a masculine business, but like a feminine business. That was what I would look at. I would look at that woman and I would go, dang, like that is goddess status. And so that became kind of this a goal of mine and it's you know now it's a it's been a self-fulfilling prophecy which is but a positive one <laughs> yeah yeah beautiful you mentioned that like that, that there's something associated with the feminine that is aligned with sort of magic and miracles and um so, yeah just like almost achieving sort of the impossible in a way and can you speak a little bit more to that and um yeah, and what what you mean by that, and how you how you see that happening? Mm -hmm. So, life is spiralic, and that is the magic of women. When you see a woman dancing, she is you know she's spiraling her hips. When we make love, we're spiraling our hips. When we give birth, we're spiraling our hips. Like we understand the wisdom of the spiral. Now, do we all necessarily have like, we all have that inner gnosis, obviously, because we do the spiraling with our hips, but we may not have it like, you know, up here in our mind is like, oh, this is what I'm doing. But that is in a sense, what I mean by we, you know, we defy logic, we quantum leap, we timeline jump because, you know, for, in, for the masculine, you know, point A and point B are here and there's a line. But for the feminine, it's point A, then point B, and then point A again, and then point B, and then point A again, like in a spiral, and it's spiraling, um, you know, all the time. That is literally how time works. I, I believe that's how time works for everyone, even men, but I, we've kind of been sold this linear time, time thing, and a lot of most of the women that I see who have done, you know, the crazy, like, quote unquote, crazy things and achieved the, you know, impossible, quote unquote, impossible goals. That's it's because they refuse to adhere to the linear time frame, And it's, it is a gnosis. It's an inner wisdom and inner knowledge that we have when we tap into the feminine that comes, you know, it's, we already have it embodied. Like I'm sitting on a ball right now and I'm spiraling because like that is what we do. We, we spiral. It's built into our bodies. That is how we birth things into the world. And that I think is, um, that's what I mean. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, totally. I love it. Um, and yeah, there's a lot, there's so much wisdom in the, in the, in the spiral because, there's always a returning, right? A returning back to the point, but having grown from the last time that you were there. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I also really love that because as somebody who runs a digital marketing agency, um, and I intend when I started this agency, you know, almost five years ago, I was in largely in reaction to a more masculine type model. 
um, where it was like, what's the ROI on this? And how can we blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, just this very sort of like high pressure, um, hustle, hustle, hustle mode. And I was like, is, are there any agencies that are actually like serving people who want to work in a more, um, flowing, spiralic, um, loving and like where the impact is just as, if not more important than the, the money, the money is super important, but like the more we're driven by impact and the more we're driven by magic and miracle and like mission, I feel like the more all of the other stuff can fall, uh, beautifully into place. Mm. So, um, yeah, so I, I, it's really refreshing to me to talk to other, um, business owners and CEOs who have that similar sort of mindset of like, um, I, I not really wanting to work in that linear fashion, but really honoring, um, like letting the, the whole picture, the holistic picture. Mm -hmm. where it's not just about like this linear, like how much, what are, you know, how much ROI am I getting from this particular lane? It's like, oh, but there's a huge picture. It's your, it's our energetic lane. It's the whole ecosystem of everything that we're doing in this moment. There's so much more to it. And I feel like that is um, a, a feminine way of looking at, at the world and at business. Yeah. There's a place for, you know, words, like to, or terms like ROI and KPIs and there's a place for that um, but that's not the only things that are the markers of success and so you know I that that's really the the big invitation that I you know that I put out or that I hope for people to see is that it, it's beyond that and in fact when you let go of that you let go of the timeline that's when, that's when the miracle happens. Absolutely. Um, so one thing that you said that I absolutely love was to make love our sacred chant. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you speak more to that of like how we can embody that? Well, I really think that one of the main ways is by cultivating self-love and I think that it's also kind of a like a programming that'll that women are under that we seek love from outside of us whether it's as we're a child and we need to seek love from our parents and then you know in adolescence adulthood it's seeking love from a partner and so that's to me is that to me is like something that's really important to get out of the way right and create this inner source of love within us and you know my my personal experience was that like I had a parent what I that I was never going to be good enough for and so I realized at a very early age that I was responsible for loving myself now that doesn't mean that I'm perfect at it or that I fully mastered it, but I definitely know that I got a head start because I had this realization. I was like, oh, like I love me. Like she's looking at me and telling me that there are things wrong with my body or my weight and all of these things. But I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, I look amazing. Like she doesn't know what she's talking about. And so that was like obviously as a child was jolting and it did wake me up but it came, you know, through my pain came my greatest gifts. And that was just, I realized like, oh, this is my responsibility to love myself is, is all on, not all on me, but when, when it is, and I focus on loving me, I'm, I'm free. I'm not seeking it from anyone else anymore. And so we all have just like this infinite well of love in us. and whatever you want to call it, you know, source or the universe or God, goddess, the infinite, um, it's, it's within us all. And you can tap into it, you can draw upon that well, at any time. And so cultivating a practice where you really just fill yourself with love, and like, take full responsibility for 
loving yourself and not like needing it from other people, like getting it from other people's the cherry on top. That is a really um, a powerful way to set the tone. If I enter a room and I am like seeking approval and then I'm not getting it, then I'm not having a good time. But if I enter the room and I'm feeling myself, I know that I'm a goddess. And I know that even if everyone in this room hates me, <laughs> I love me. I mean, to me, that's like the ultimate sovereignty, right? That's such a buzzword now. And I, I bring it up a lot because I, I actually kind of love the word, even though it's a buzzword, I'm usually a rebel against buzzwords, but <laughs> I just really, I love that word. And to me, what you're talking about with making love our sacred chance and really embodying love ourselves no matter what's happening externally is the ultimate definition of sovereignty i agree yeah yeah and i i do think that it it can go a little bit deeper if we wanted to get more um i guess tangible with you know making love our sacred chant but for me it, i sing like singing toning oming chanting at all of the above and really like opening up my throat chakra, my, my channel all the way. Like when I tone or when I'm singing, I'm listening. And then I'm just repeating through, through my vo vocal cords, what I heard from the divine. And so that to me is like another layer that you can add to, you know, making love your sacred chant. It's like, First, I'm coming from, uh, yes, I love myself. And then there's this other practice, which to me is an, emb an embodiment practice, which I know it's not just to me, it's a lot of people would agree of just really letting yourself make sound and being healed by your own sound and pulling in, you know, sound, listening, seeing what you hear, even just when you make sound and the room resonates and listening to what you hear and how things are reacting to your sound, it helps you understand the context of, okay, now I'm interacting with another human being or my beloved or even my cat. And what I am saying is resonating and I need to choose wisely. I need to be aware. I need to practice that capital P presence because I am affecting my reality with my sound. And so I do love to teach that practice to women so that they can feel that power within themselves. Um, that's amazing. So I'm imagining like that you actually teach your team this like the, the ones that are serving your clients as well as teaching your clients this, and you've got this like amazing culture of everybody like um, tapping into their own sound as part of their business practice. Is Absolutely, that, that is oh God, what so I cool. teach. <laughs> That's what I teach inside Goddess Status. We, we tone the whole way through. Um, my clients all know that I channel songs for them all the time. And so if maybe if we're working through something or we we've got something coming, I'll, I hear it. I, I, I don't, I'm hesitant to say like, oh, I wrote a song. Like I heard it and I just relayed the information, <laughs> but we, we have little, you know, little ditties and little jaunts here and there that we sing and it, you know whoever didn't like busting out into song why not <laughs> I know I do so I love it and I feel like we all need I mean many of us need that sort of training and empowerment because um it there's some there's some like sort of energetic blocks to to bust through uh, when it comes to singing and sounding our voice I know I speak for myself even in that way so I think it's really beautiful that you're integrating that with business and this kind of like I almost feel like this is an obvious question but it, just in case it pulls out even more yumminess from you like how do you feel what do you envision the new paradigm and the new earth like feeling like and looking like if we could just like snap our fingers and enter into our sort of ideal manifestation of a new paradigm 
what would be sort of the coolest part about that or what what comes up for you hmm. well first of all thank you for the invitation to just think about that because it's already just a beautiful thought um i think what's really coming to mind is rest everyone is well rested <laughs> in the newer <laughs> we are nobody is rushing nobody you know needs a constant um, hit of distraction they can actually be present and i think that what this you know what it what it really um boils down to is having that space to listen and to hear what need you know what needs to happen i mean you you read about all of the visionaries of the past they 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 all heard some voice right or they got a download or they were just you know resting it wasn't when they were working their butt off it was when they finally stepped away they got the divine download and so i feel like that is what the new earth will look like is more people tapped into their channel and like letting the divine do the heavy lifting inviting it in like you said life is ceremony so having that you know when we who wants to do a rushed ceremony no we we rest we we carefully place you know the items that are going to stir the feelings within us that are important for that particular ceremony all of these things take presence and take, you know, listening, like, like I could, I could talk to my, would you like to come? Okay. Maybe not today. Maybe not you. Oh, you do. This is another She's one. lifting up her crystals right now. Y'all <laughs> on audio only, <laughs> you know, like my crystals totally let me know yeah. like, Hey, I need to be with you today or whatever, or, there's you know when you're preparing when you're actually like doing things with intention which is not as easy to do when you're not well rested so that was kind of a rambly answer but to recap rest <laughs> tap more tapped into our channel or fully tapped into our channel and you know capital p presence yeah. And when I hear like rest and presence and all that, it's like nervous system regulation. Mm -hmm. It's like our nervous systems are all so beautifully like regulated and calm. And, 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 and the other word that comes to my mind is like in a deep state of listening. Mm -hmm. So, and that's part of just having your, your channel open is like, you're, you're in a deep state of listening. So you can hear the song to sing. And so you can hear nature speaking to you and so you can hear you know mother earth and or the cosmic sun or or whatever it is um so you can really really hear it and then um speak it or embody it or move it through you in some way mm -hmm. and so yeah i love that it's beautiful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how um i mean i feel like this is another one that's obvious like goddess support really does help people move into that space into that sort of new paradigm relaxed place of being um empowered to listen mm -hmm. yeah. yeah absolutely i i mean the, almost all of well, actually not almost all all of my clients are oracles channels and so they, you know, sometimes they'll ask me, what do you, what do I, I'm launching, like, what do I need to do? I'm like, I need you to relax. Like, we got it. I need you oh to my God. focus on receiving and call in the people, you know, go into the quantum, call in your clients. That's what I want them I to need do. All of my digital marketing clients at Conscious Conversion to work with you first. And <laughs> No, actually, right now we've got an amazing um, clients who all sort of get that. But there have been times where it's like where people are freaking out. And I'm like, this does not help your mm -hmm. job or my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's that's amazing. Yeah, it's like um, I love I love that. And um, if can you please um, tell our listeners like how they can find you? I think you've got a course. I don't know exactly when this is going to air. Um, but I think you've got, um, a launch coming up. I'm launching right now. You're launching right Don't now. Don't I seem so nice and chill? <laughs> so chill. Yes. 
Um, so Mata Grace is in launch mode and you would never know it by her nervous system regulation. Um, however, she's got a course. I just don't know when this is going to air. So, um, but you've probably got this thing opening. So I do, I run it twice a year. So even if someone were to listen, you know, another time, um, I run it every spring and every fall. So it's just called goddess status and it's 16 weeks. It's full, um, full of embodiment and empowerment. So in in embodiment, we have the spiritual goddess codes and in empowerment, we've got the boss goddess codes and they're, you know, seamlessly woven together. And it's all about self-mastery, knowing what your medicine is, and then also knowing how to birth it and bring it out into the world. Um, Because a lot of, a lot of us enter entrepreneurship really bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and we want to we we see everyone else at point b point b is you know the time freedom the money freedom the dharma freedom and we want to get to point b as fast as possible but you know we all start at point a which is full of limiting beliefs and an an ego that needs to die and be reborn and imposter syndrome and so it's really about you know, quote unquote, getting over all of those things, or at least seeing them for what they are as they're happening in the moment, you know, the pattern, learning pattern recognition so that you can master yourself and um, all those kinds of things. And, and then obviously like the, the real tangible, like this is how to sell, this is how to price, like all, um, you know, do you need a website? Here's, you know, what you might need or what to do instead of this or da, 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 da. Like we, I get into all of the, 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 the 3D as well. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's a, it's a comprehensive program because that's another, that's another kind of trap that I feel I see. I do see people fall into like the, the quick business thing. And it's just, it, it's a devotion. We're not we're not creating a side hobby or a hustle or like we're we're creating a a a business that is in alignment with our soul mission and it takes time so and commitment and consistency and all the things and people can find you at goddess.support yep that's my website (laughs) that's the website and that's also the instagram account yep yeah nice and and simple beautiful easy to remember and um gosh super super beautifully executed as well i just have to say like your website is gorgeous your instagram account is beautiful um that's how i can... roll yeah i know <laughs> i mean that's, we, the... that's how we roll i got us support. i was gonna say that's <laughs> how that's like a, another one of like the stamp of the divine feminine is beauty at least in my world like I'm just, I love beauty and it's like my yeah. Taurus Venus sort of thing. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm really drawn to your your brand and the elegance of your brand and, and the beauty of it. So thanks for making so much gorgeousness on this, on this earth and in this life. Thank you so much. And mm-hmm. this is just another fun thing I want to add. Um, I, all, almost all my clients and we, we do, we talk about it in, in goddess status, but all my clients, we usually um, get them micro dosing <laughs> on psilocybin. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm like, I just have to throw that in there because it, you know, obviously in a, in a respectful way. Um, but, and, and, you know, where I live, it's decriminalized. Shout out San Francisco. So, like, it's, but to me, it's also a really important part of life. And to me, the, 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 enter, the, the spirit of psilocybin is very feminine and mothering and motherly. So I like, of course, I'd like to infuse it into I all that I do. That. I love that. I mean, I love that you brought plant medicine back into this conversation because that is one of my absolute passions. And that's all why realms. I had not just, to. I was like, hey, wait. <laughs> no, I mean, not just go. the psychedelic kind, all the plant medicines. I mean, like, but the psychedelic kind are my are pretty fun. Um, but you know it's like the plants that's like literally the combination of earth and light and the Mm -hmm. sun like coming together in an embodied form and we and they can speak to us through their through their ingest they were ingesting them Mm -hmm. and um i just i i 
find that to be the coolest thing in the world. I'm, I think that's amazing that your clients end up often getting into a microdosing protocol. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's helpful. It's healing. And uh, we were talking about nervous system regulation and it's, it's one of the um, high integrity shortcuts to get there. Absolutely. I'm actually working on a um, microdosing protocol um, of the, of the Wachuma. Mm -hmm, so, and yeah, it's not something that's super common. So that's something I'm working on right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shout out to the, to the medicines mm -hmm. and thank you so much for the work that you do. I'm so grateful to you. Thank you all for, for listening. Please check out Mari Grace and goddess.support. She is a beautiful human as you can as you can hear and sending you all so much love and divine feminine radiance <laughs> have an awesome rest of your day